Okay, so uh, what I do is I'm the co-founder of Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange. We are a network of Q&A sites. Okay, so the premise is when you come to our site, you have a question, right? But a question about a specific topic. Um, and that's one thing we're kind of religious about, that you don't start with your question by going to a busy street and just yelling it out and hoping someone hears you and answers it. Uh, you start, the premise of your question is like, it's a question about motorcycles. If you have a question about motorcycles, where do you go to find people who know about motorcycles? Well, you would go to a motorcycle store, that's a commercial arrangement. You would go to a motorcycle club, right? I mean, this is my mental model of the internet. It's a group of experts on a particular topic. So when you look at the Stack Exchange site, this is the aggregated collection of all the, the questions, the popular questions that are coming in across the entire network. So <clears throat> on the network right now, we have one giant site, which is Stack Overflow, which is the first site we started. It's very, very big, like enormously huge, like top whatever on the internet. I don't even care about that stuff, but it's really big. So we have one enormous planet, and then a bunch of little satellite planets rotating around that, okay? And they're all pretty geeky, right? Let's be honest with each other. If you start a site for programmers and you, you decide to play the six degrees of Kevin Bacon game, you know, where you have a programmer who's a home brewer who knows a pilot, right? This is the audience that we started with, and, and we love that audience. So if we go to the site directory, you can see here, this is ordered sort of by uh, size. We have Stack Overflow, which is for programmers. Uh, super user, which is for just sort of computer power geek users. Uh, server fault, which is for system administrators. Uh, an Ubuntu site, a gaming site, programmers. And the list goes on and on. Our math site is quite good, actually, um, for reasons I'll explain later. Um, but you can view the site directory here. So, so the first thing you do when you come to the Stack Exchange Network is figure out, well, where, where do I belong? You sort of self-select into these communities. And that's definitely one thing we overlap with on Reddit, is Reddit is, is a collection of communities that sort of fragment out and sort of coalesce around these specific topics. We believe very deeply in that, uh, in that model that you start with a topic. You don't start with social relationships necessarily. You start with, I love X. I mean, I love the hell out of motorcycles, right? That's what I care about. Uh, and that's the kind of people that I want to talk to because they're going to know all the stuff about that. Uh, and as far as reputation systems go, one interesting thing about this, you might consider, well, how do you decide what topics you have in your network? Okay, who decides that? Now, on Reddit, anyone can do this. They just go start it, and it just happens. On our site, it's a little bit more like democracy in both the positive and negative ways, because if you want a site, you have to lobby for that site. You have to write a proposal, uh, which is like, okay, if there was a site about X, what questions would we ask there? What would be on topic? What would be off topic? Why would people come there? So you have to come up with sort of a list of questions, and this is what we call Area 51, which is where you come and you say, hey, I wish you guys would do a site about X. Okay? And then you lobby other users. You promote your site, just like you would promote a bill in Congress and say, please support my bill, please support my bill, vote for my bill. And if enough people vote for it, uh, eventually the site comes into being as a private beta. So we have sort of a much more structured view of the world. Uh, not that that makes it right or wrong, it's just that's sort of the way we approach the problem, uh, is for these communities to work, they have to sort of have a democratic process. That's what we do. We come up with a process of system of law, of government for these sites. So they don't tear, A, they don't tear themselves apart, which happens all the time on the internet. And B, they can come together in a way that actually works. It doesn't fail. We only want to launch sites that have a reasonable chance of actually succeeding. So here I'm sorting by uh, progress, and you can sort of see, I really want the library's proposal to go, by the way. So if anyone's into libraries, please uh, commit to that proposal, because I want that to go through. Um, uh, and some of these are subsets of existing sites, like chess, for example. We have a board game site, like a, just a broader board game site, but the chess community is saying, hey, we're not a board game, we're chess, man, right? <laughs> and that's okay, that's cool, that's what this is all about. This is like figuring that out. Are you an actually, like a, a legitimate community? Can you survive? Because we had a Go site, the game of Go. I thought that was gonna do well, but it didn't at all. Um, it launched, and then it was, just wasn't working, so we folded it back into the board game site, which they were okay with. But that's, that's sort of how this process works. So reputation systems. Uh, if you have questions about how our reputation system would work, I, I, I like to think our FAQ is pretty good at this point. So I'm gonna click on what is reputation here on our FAQ. All our sites have the same FAQ, really. So it doesn't matter which planet you end up on. Um, so I'm gonna click on that. So the way reputation works in our system, and I think the only sane way reputation works anywhere, is it comes from your peers. The system doesn't give you reputation. Other people do. Uh, because they see what you wrote, and they say, hey, this is credible, this is useful, this is interesting, this is authoritative, you know, and they vote it up. 
So when they vote it up, you get a certain amount of karma. Now, one thing that we do, um, if, you, if you can read there, uh, questions aren't worth as much reputation as answers. This is a rebalancing we had to do later in the life of the system where we realized that questions, they're necessary for the system to work, but they're not really the reason you get up in the morning. I, I kind of liken it to the sand that, goes in a, uh, that makes the pearl. You need the sand of the questions to make the pearls, but the reality is the sand is everywhere. Everybody has lots of questions. What we don't have is like answers, really good answers, right? So it was kind of crazy to say, okay, you ask a question, you get as much reputation as the person who gave this brilliant, amazing answer. That's just not an equitable system that doesn't work. So we had to rebalance the system. Uh, and most, most users were actually okay with that once we explained why. Um, there's some other tweaks to the reputation system. I won't get into all the nuances of it here because A, I don't have the time, and B, you can certainly read about it. Um, the important thing to note about our reputation system is the more reputation you get, the more power you have in the system. So when I showed you Area 51, if you have a lot of reputation in Stack Exchange, when you support a proposal, like if you said, hey, that library's proposal sounds really good, and you have 10,000 reputation on any Stack Exchange planet, that lends a lot of weight to that proposal, more than, say, random internet user saying, hey, library's proposal, great. So this feeds into not only on the site itself, but also on the system, the democratic system we have of creating new sites, that gives you weight in that system, and you carry more weight when, you, when we create a site, because we figure, hey, you're a really avid user on our network, so you're likely to participate in the site, much more likely than random internet user who has an email address. Uh, and if you drill down into some of these abilities, uh, some of them are pretty, pretty aggressive. Like once you get to 2,000 reputation, that's a big one because you can edit anything in the system, like Wikipedia, without peer review. Now, we did add a system where you can go on Stack Exchange right now, any site, click edit and submit a change, but it has to be peer reviewed because we don't know you yet, okay? Uh, but once you get 2,000 rep, that you can just do whatever, right? You could edit every post in the system to say you're a big doofus if you really wanted to. <laughs> but part of the premise of the system is once you get really involved in a community, like you're invested, like you've spent time there, you've written stuff there. You don't want that community, bad things to happen to that community because it's your neighborhood, right? Like why would you want somebody to you know, tear up your street? That's crazy. Um, and we see really, really good behaviors. And that's the tiered, the, the way we approach reputation is the more reputation you have, the more power we give back to you to do things that some people would consider dangerous, but we consider it part of the social contract of, you know, this is your neighborhood, you're not gonna do the wrong thing, and you're actually gonna be interested in helping uh, maintain the community. Now, one trick with the system is that's not always true. You have, this is what I call the educator dilemma where you take your best teacher and you make them the principal, right? That doesn't really always work because not all teachers want to be the principal. <laughs> it's kind of a different skill set to be a moderator versus an average user. So it's not like you have, because you have 100,000 rep, well now you own the system and you're a moderator. Uh, we actually have elections for moderators. Uh, we have a former, formal process for that. Let me actually show it to you. Um, new tab. It might take a little bit to come up. But um, we do elect moderators from the community. So in, in addition to getting power through just getting reputation from people voting up your content, uh, you can actually say, hey, I want to run for office. I want to be a moderator of the site. And this is a very high level of power. I mean, you can just start deleting everything in the system, which we consider the, the ultimate power. <laughs> to remove things from the system is, is, is the ultimate power. Plus, you can view user information, all that stuff. Um, and this was an interesting process coming up with this, how do you elect users from the community? Because one thing we figured out is this, this reputation number doesn't always equate to being a good moderator, kind of like the principal problem I talked about. And we had to add some nuances to it when we, did, when we ran the latest election here on Stack Overflow, which is, again, the huge planet. It needs lot, it has like 12 moderators. Uh, we had to add some additional criteria to, to the entry. Before it was like, okay, you, if you have 5,000 reputation, you can run for moderator. Later on, we said, okay, you can have 5,000 reputation, but you also have to hold these other badges that show that you're actually interested in helping us maintain the system, not just answering questions, you know, providing awesome answers to questions. And not to single anyone out here, but like this guy, S. Lax, he's a great guy, he's a very smart programmer, but he was a terrible, terrible moderator. And we were like, what went wrong, right? And if you look at the election results, we had actually somebody on our meta analyze this and look at who, who won the election and why. It was almost a linear correlation with the reputation number. So it was almost like users were saying, hmm, I see this number next to their name, therefore that must be the way that I vote for these users. And 
sometimes that works. You'll get great moderators, and sometimes it doesn't. But that, that just shows you the perils of like any reputation system has a lot of nuance to like what does that number mean and how does it work. And we certainly saw that play out with the election. Um, now that. Um, leads me into badges. I mentioned that we, we added some criteria for the election. So there's a reputation system. There's also a badging system. Now badges are just basically little meaningless awards that we give you for doing things. There's three classes, as you can see, are gold, silver, and bronze. And our mentality here, and this actually came from the Xbox. I was very skeptical about these, these achievement systems. But they're very educational if you do them the right way. That's why I believe in this badge system. It's not like we fund badges. It's like this is much more fun than reading the fact. OK, that's the way this works. Because now it's a, it, it's a little bit of a game. It's like, well, why does this badge exist? That's what you're supposed to think here. Like, you know, why is there a badge for leaving 10 comments? Well, A, how the hell do I leave a comment? Because in our system, you need 50 reputation to even leave a comment on something that isn't yours. So that'll sort of send you down the path of figuring out, like, OK, why do comments work the way they work? Why do I need reputation to leave comments? I can't just get this badge. I have to get 50 reputation first before I can even do that. Um, another one that I like that's very simple is you read the fact. <laughs> you get a badge for actually clicking through on every section of the fact. Now, granted, this is very mechanical. But again, it sends the message, like, look, we value people reading the fact in our system. Um, you get a badge for filling out your user profile. These are the bronze badges, the, the hello world badges of just basic use of the system. Now, when you get to silver badges, these are more sophisticated badges that indicate that you actually understand how the community works and like you're working towards a longer term goal, right? So here's one called Booster, which means you shared a link that was visited by 300 unique IP addresses. So in other words, you publicized one of your questions and it got some traction with the world. So you get a silver badge for that called Booster. Um, voted 300 or more times. We only allow you to vote 30 times a day because voting has to be a scarce resource. If you let somebody cast 1,000 votes in a day, then somebody is going to cast 1,000 votes in a day. The votes kind of stop having meaning at that point. So we do limit you to uh, 30 votes a day. Um, there's another rule around that I won't get into. Um, one thing we do note is that these systems get complicated, right? Like I'm, I'm glossing over <laughs> some of the ways that we tweak this system over the time, um, but generally, when, when we look at badges, there's the three tiers of achievement, like the basic, the, the stretch goals, and then the, like, you are one of our leading users. Like, for example, Fanatic is a gold badge. You visited the site for 100 consecutive days, right? We have users that have visited Stack Overflow for 1,000 consecutive days. That's crazy, right? That doesn't even make sense. But that's great. You know, there's no badge for that. That would be like a platinum badge. We don't even have that. But the goal with these badges is, is it's, it's more fun than reading the fact. It's more fun than reading a manual. It's more fun than like, you know, viewing a video tutorial, which I think are really dumb. Um, it just makes it interesting. It's, it's more engaging to, to learn about the site this way. And it's completely optional, right? Like, if you don't care about any stuff, you, you just don't look at it. You don't, it doesn't bug you. It doesn't bother you. Um, but it's a much more fun way of, of, of learning about the system. Now, I talked a little bit about the privilege system. So what happens is as you reach a certain privilege level, one of the mistakes we made early in the system was that we didn't teach people what the privileges were about. Like, say you became Superman. You go home, and all of a sudden, you can fly. You're invulnerable. <laughs> you have x-ray vision. Well, what the hell, right? Like, what, what would you do? Like, how does this work? What, why do I have? And we were doing this to people. We're just like, hey, you're Superman. Enjoy. Go have fun, right? And they were like, great. And they were like smashing into buildings. They were tearing you know, the walls apart. And we're like, no, 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 no. That's not how you're supposed to be Superman. You're supposed to go fight crime and be really you know, an uh, emblem of justice and all this stuff. And they didn't get that, right? Because we weren't teaching them how to do that. So what happens is when you reach these privileged thresholds, and the UI is kind of crappy here still, but say, um, let's see. Uh, edit questions answered. That's a big one, right? So what happens is a little notification comes up. Hey, you just leveled up. Congratulations. You're awesome, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's a little wiki of like, OK, here's why we give you this ability. Here's what this is for, right? Like, why would I want to edit someone else's post? Isn't that their post? You know, isn't it that sacred? That's the words they have committed to the internet. Every byte is sacred. Therefore, I can't touch them. We have to teach them that, like, no, no, no. Editing is a shared family value. The reason Stack Overflow works is because the, the pages are alive, right? They get better over time. They're not just this tombstone of like, this is the way the world was in 1996, right? That's not useful to me now. Um, these pages are supposed to evolve and live, a little bit like Wikipedia. Um, and in fact, if you look at this diagram, which I'm fond of showing, 
if, when we originally, originally designed it, it really was the confluence of these sort of four things. The wiki aspect of editability, the blog aspect of, hey, I am this person, here is what I say, you should believe me because I am authoritative about X, uh, insofar as it goes. Dig and Reddit, certainly we looked at Reddit, we love voting. I mean, voting is one of the primary actions in the system. And then the, the forum thing of like, not necessarily a discussion of like, what's your favorite X-man, but like, the idea that you're actually ha interacting with other people towards furthering a goal. You know, it's a little bit form-like. So we were trying to combine all those aspects. And you can sort of see that, and certainly with the Wikipedia influence in, in the editing privilege that, that you unlock. Now, one of the things I heard you guys talk about was, was climate change. And I want to show a specific example of a, a, a sub-community that we have. This is the skeptics community. It's about scientific skepticism. And they're actually, this is the month, I'm on the month tab here. So what we're seeing is the, uh, the top sort of questions that have come up over the last month. And there is one uh, about climate change. Now, granted, it's you know just I don't know how good it is. <laughs> it has 2,000 views, so hopefully it's not uh, too bad. Uh, but this is a community of people who have formed around this concept of let's investigate these claims uh, people are making about the world. And they had to come up with their own set of rules about what that meant, because the problem with a skeptic site is it could really be about anything, right? Like, you know. Is this real? Is, you know, is this real? How does this mouse work? I mean, anything is skepticism, right? It's like it's it's kind of a broad topic. So they kind of immediately had to come up with a set of rules. Like, we only want to question things that a lot of people believe. If it's just something that your roommate Joe thinks, we don't care, right? You know, this has to be something that a, a you can make a case that a broad swath of the world, some for some reasonable value, believe this thing. And then we're going to question it. And then the question of like, how do you do it? Because this has to be about science. You can't just say, well, J Joe believes that he's wrong because I said so. It's like, well, show us the science. They have to be really strict about citations and references of like, why is this the way it is? Um, and, and they're kind of a little bit, uh, maybe meaner is not the right word, but just much more stricter, uh, much more strict about how they, they define things. But skepticism is really cool. Like I learned a lot about skepticism from the site. I didn't really understand it, but I went and researched it. And um, you know, the very nature of asking questions gets to the core of, of what skepticism is. And I think it's a really powerful uh, community on our network. Uh, and I think that's the, the, the broad survey of what we do at Stack Exchange.